and welcome to Catalan News. A full collision between the Spanish and Catalan governments on independence is just around the corner. Lawmakers are bracing themselves for a key plenary session tomorrow in the Catalan Parliament. We'll explain everything about it before travelling to Brussels where MEPs show concern about the Catalan police's lack of direct contact with Europol. Let's begin. It's the calm before the storm. Nothing has happened yet, but it's no secret that tomorrow will be a turning point for the Catalan independence movement. Its leaders will try to pass legislation for a referendum. Madrid will do everything in its power to stop it as both sides come head to head. The plenary of the Catalan parliament meets tomorrow with a seemingly ordinary agenda. Yet everyone is expecting a twist. At some point, pro-independence lawmakers will try to alter the agenda to fast-track passing the referendum bill and the transition law. Immediately afterwards, the government would be set to sign a decree officially calling the vote. This is the plan, but the opposition and the Spanish government will not sit back and do nothing. Neither will the Spanish judicial system, as was made clear today, after the opening event to officially kick off the judicial term in Madrid. Frente a la sin razón de quienes se sitúan al margen de la ley, del Estado de Derecho y de la democracia, no cabe vacilaciones de clase alguna. The president of the Spanish Supreme Court said that the attitude from the pro-independence leaders damaged democracy and are unacceptable. The Catalan cabinet answered the attorney general soon afterwards. Nosaltres no cedirem davant d'actituds predemocràtiques i preconstitucionals de l'estat espanyol. El fet d'intimidar i intentar-se carregar la inviolabilitat dels diputats del Parlament de Catalunya, doncs nosaltres aquí doncs, eh, no cedirem. On the eve of this crucial day, the Spanish government delegate in Catalonia said that if the referendum bill is passed, the independence movement will become anti-democratic. The leader of the opposition in the country claimed that it being passed will mean breaking the way the chamber functions. While the Spanish cabinet keeps saying the vote will not take place, the Socialist Party is not so sure. Its leader in Catalonia doesn't rule it out. Yet, according to him, it won't have enough guarantees to be considered a referendum. Meanwhile, his counterpart in Spain asked Catalans not to go to the polling stations on October 1st. The Catalan government has repeatedly said that a binding vote will take place. It also claims that international law gives Catalans the right to self-determination. There are Catalan parties that support an independence referendum but feel uncomfortable with the organization of a vote without Spain's permission. It's the case of the party of Barcelona's mayor, Ada Colau, but her number two said today that he will vote yes on October 1st, and the mayor even hinted that she could offer some local buildings as polling stations. The Catalan branch of Podemos is also refusing to boycott the vote, defending the right of Catalonia to hold a referendum. Let's move on to another topic now. It's almost been 20 days since the horrible terrorist attacks in Barcelona and Cambrils that killed 16 and injured more than 130. There are still around 10 people in hospital, but no one in critical condition anymore. Now the debate focus is on how security services and intelligence agencies can prevent atrocities like this happening again. Could the terrorist attacks in Barcelona have been prevented? Nobody really knows the answer, yet at this point it is clear that better coordination between police forces would certainly have helped, especially when the leader of the jihadist cell had a history that raises eyebrows, including trips overseas. As the fallout reaches the European sphere, EU officials in Brussels have expressed concern. The attacks in uh, Barcelona, in Turku, London, Stockholm and Berlin before show beyond any doubt that in several of these attacks, a more timely and uh, effective sharing of information could have saved lives. Some put this down to purely technical reasons, but others suggest it is also a matter of political will, as the Catalan police do not have direct access to the intelligence database of Europol, the EU Agency for Law Enforcement Cooperation. The Mossos, the police from Barcelona, from Catalonia, were not able to access the information on the terrorists. So this is still the big problem. It's the political barriers that exist within member states, but as well intra-member states, in indeed the sharing of the information. And uh, my third question... Catalan uh, MEPs have also brought the issue to the attention of EU institutions. 
Ernest Urtasun, a member of the Greens, sent a written question to the European Commission asking whether it considers the Catalan police to be a competent authority. But what do Europol rules actually say? Article 7 says that member states should designate a national unit as a liaison body with Europol. Yet its fifth paragraph makes it clear that countries can also allow direct contact with other police forces. Spanish authorities so far have refused to compromise over granting Catalan police direct contact with Europol. They argue that they already have access to the information through them and that the coordination between police forces is working well. And let's continue with Brussels because it's precisely the EU conflict with Russia that is causing suffering to Catalan farmers. They have been mobilising for months to ask for more compensation for the losses that they face due to the Russian veto on fruit exports. And even the Minister of Agriculture has urged the EU to listen to them more. Nectarines and peaches are becoming cheaper and cheaper. This means that the farmers in Catalonia don't even recover the cost of the fruit production and in some cases they even lose money. In July, the farmers took the situation to the streets, protesting by blocking main roads and throwing out perfectly edible fruit, demanding that the European Union take action in order to solve the crisis. Now the European Commission has taken 20,000 tons of fruit off the market, but the farmers claim that the solution doesn't go nearly far enough. Their cold storage rooms are already full of harvest from June. This means that the farmers cannot get newly picked fruit off their hands. The Catalan Minister of Agriculture argues that an important issue in the conflict is that the information that the Spanish Ministry of Agriculture sends to the European Commission is inaccurate. With a more efficient information system, crises like this could be avoided. It's a problem, the information with which they are taking decisions at the European Commission, because it's not está actualizada ni se ajusta realment a la realitat del sector i evidentment sí és cert que a nivell estatal un dels principals pols productors és Catalunya. Com a Generalitat no tenim un accés directe formal amb la Comissió Europea per poder traslladar directament aquesta informació. The crisis go back to 2014 when Russia imposed a veto on certain agricultural and food products coming from the EU in the wake of Russian annexation of Crimea. This chain of events has caused a production surplus which the farmers are now suffering. The Farmers Association now call for a definitive plan for 2018 to solve the situation. And with this, we finish today's show. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with all the information about what happens in a day that is expected to be quite interesting here in Catalonia. We'll leave you with some images of the train museum in Villanova, which is due to get a complete makeover in the next few months. See you tomorrow. <laughs>